which I will show you in just a second, for Richie Mahjong, uh, as played in uh, several uh, Mahjong games that exist in the world, as well as Mahjong mini games. Uh, one of the things I've noticed, like throughout the uh, internet scape, is that uh, you know a lot of people are having difficulty when they have uh, video games that have Mahjong mini games, such as the Yakuza series or the Final Fantasy XIV uh, Damon Mahjong mini game and the Golden Saucer. Uh, maybe I should start actually by introducing myself. Hello, my name is Sarek Z. Uh, I am essentially just some guy, but uh, one of the things I've done is I write a lot of guides on Game Facts, specifically for the Yakuza series. So it's a big, you know, big uh, series, and uh, I really like writing guides. So this was a natural fit for me. But uh, yeah, at the end of the day, uh, one of the things I found a lot of people uh, having trouble with was getting their heads around mahjong. So. I think the point of this panel here is to just uh, essentially, let me get to the actual point of this panel. Uh, what first is that is Mahjong is actually quite a fun game. Uh, I really like to stress that. Uh, once you get the hang of it, it uh, you can find yourself getting sucked in and it's uh, a lot of fun. But uh, really the point of here is uh, I'm not trying to create uh, you know, high level players out of anyone here. This, the whole point is uh, you know, people just trying to get themselves to an entry level of play and try to figure out how to get themselves through a match without being completely confused, you know, just not figuring out what they're going through. So, but uh, really today we're just looking to have fun. Uh, we're gonna start with, of course, this little presentation, just going through the rules. I understand a lot of people, you know, have gone through like videos, gone through guides, and it's like, sometimes it's still difficult to uh, understand a game without actually seeing it played. So once we finish the presentation, about 15 minutes or so, then right after that, we'll move on to uh, actually playing the game. So yes, I already covered this, but essentially, yeah, a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but uh, there are a few games out there who will have uh, Mahjong mini games in them. So the whole point here is to uh, get our heads around that. So uh, I, I would imagine that if you are having, uh, coming here, like being exposed to Mahjong and still not quite getting it, which is fine, uh, you might have a little bit of knowledge, but we are still gonna start from the beginning, essentially. So uh, Mahjong is a, a four-player game. Uh, it started in China. Uh, basically, it's developed with regards to uh, other card games that involve draw and discard, uh, that they uh, were about making sets and runs and valid hands and using those to win. Uh, one of the most common Western analogs for uh, Mahjong would be Rummy. Uh, where you have to make melds and you know uh, just groups together. So we're going to start with the actual tiles themselves, since they're not normal cards. But uh, a mahjong set, uh, sorry, a mahjong set of tiles has four of every kind of tile. So there are three suits there. You can see the three suits from the top to the bottom there. Uh, one suit is characters. One suit is dots or circles or coins or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the other is uh, sticks, uh, usually used for uh, their, their bamboo sticks essentially. So. Those are the three suits. And at the bottom, you can see a list of the honors. Uh, so from the left there, we have the four wins. Uh, that's east, south, west, and north uh, in that order. If your Mahjong minigame is nice to you, they will tell you what the wins are. Like they'll have a little, a little letter on them, a little uh, Roman letter that can tell you ESWN. If they're not nice, you kind of have to figure it out. But uh, most of them are pretty good about that these days. And the last three there are the three dragon tiles. So that'd be the red dragon, the white dragon, and the green dragon. And uh, there's usually not much identifying them except for the fact that they're just bright red, completely blank white, and have a big green character on them. So uh, you kind of have to remember those. But uh, for the most part, you know, it's if you're still having trouble, it might be a good idea to you know like print out a uh, copy of this particular JPEG. You can find lists of them online and everything. But uh, that's essentially where we're starting there. So as I mentioned, uh, Mahjong is a draw and discard game. The idea is four players are sitting around a table. Uh, each are dealt 13 tiles, and each player is uh, assigned a uh, wind direction, depending on their seat around the table. And also, there is a cardinal or prevailing wind uh, that governs the set of rounds. And uh, this always starts on east. Most mini games will just have you play like an east only game. Some of them can allow you to play like an east and south game. Uh, we'll go over that in a bit, but the whole point is um, there is a wind governing the uh, set of rounds. So uh, yeah, the player of the east side draws first and then discards a tile. And essentially, it just keeps on going draw and discard, draw and discard around the uh, table until there is a winner or the tiles are exhausted, creating a draw state. Was there a raised hand back there? So, 
So uh, what typically happens in most live games is that there'll be a set of dice. They roll the dice and go around the table, counting around the table, and whoever it lands on ends up being east. It's not an actual compass direction. There's no real feng shui involved to it or anything like that. It's just a point of uh, someone has to be called east, and they usually do that by rolling dice. So that's another thing I want to point out, too. I mean, when you're actually playing a live game in front of everyone else and you have to shuffle and count points and all that, there's a lot more to this game. We don't really have, I mean, we could have time for all of that, but I want to get to the games as quickly as possible. In those uh, video games with the mini games, they will take care of all that for you. You know, you won't have to worry about any of it. So uh, just want to show you really quickly. So this is uh, what Clubhouse looks like, um, which we're going to play a little bit later. So essentially, this is what a, your average hand will look like, just a set of tiles on your side, and everyone has their own set of tiles. We'll come back to this slide a bit as we uh, get to the other kinds of elements that are introduced. So uh, the whole point of having these Mahjong tiles is you want to build a hand. So you want to build a valid hand that is, in general, uh, almost every winning Mahjong hand will have four sets and a pair. And the sets of the, the four sets can be either triplets or runs, any mix thereof. Uh, triplets are uh, three of the exact same tile. It has to be the same tile. And there are four of each tile in uh, the Mahjong tile set. So that's what you got there. And runs are three numbers of in order of the same suit. So two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so on. Uh, there are also quads. We will get to that later. That's just going to be a little extra thing. One thing you'll learn is that there are a couple little extra rules sprinkled in at every point of this uh, presentation that you kind of have to think, you know, not all about front ways, but uh, just in general, we'll come back to these kind of things. Uh, and the pair is simply two of the same tile. Very simple. Three sets, four sets, and two pairs. Okay, so uh, general tips for looking to build a hand. Uh, it's generally easier to make runs than triplets. Obviously, there are four, four of each tile, so making a triplet's kind of tough. Making a run tends to be a lot easier. If you're starting out, it might be easier just to kind of focus on runs and uh, seek triplets less often. Uh, having two tiles in sequence in your hand uh, is generally a good thing to have because it means the third can come from either direction. Uh, if you have a three and a four, your uh, third tile can come from a two or a five. Uh, obviously, the only place that doesn't apply is at the end of the sequence if you have like a one or a two. Sorry, if you have a one and a two, then the three is you know obviously the only thing you can get to complete that. So another good idea is to uh, kind of keep an eye on discards uh, when deciding whether to keep or uh, discard a tile. So uh, going back to here, uh, you can see, obviously, we've already started discarding here. Uh, one thing I want to point out, you can see the red dragons. Uh, three red dragons from each of the players have been discarded around the end there. Uh, if I were to get the fourth red dragon, uh, I'd probably want to get rid of that because obviously there would be nothing I could do with that. So kind of keep an eye out when you get things, you know, who has thrown out what so far and can I even use this and will it end up being handy later on? Okay, so um, this is one of the things that uh, when you're playing the video game, it tends to trip a lot of people up. Uh, there is the option for taking discards that have been laid down and adding them to your hand. Uh, when you play these video games, they will shout, jump up and yell, hey, do you want a pawn? And you just sit here saying to yourself, what the heck is a pawn? I don't know what that is. Uh, and you know, you hit the button and it gives it to you and it's like, oh, I just took a tile, it looks great. And then it's like, what would I do? What does that mean? So uh, it's the idea of basically stealing or making a call or melding. It's the idea of taking a discard, adding it to your hand, and then discarding another tile. So um, there are essentially three types. There is the pwn, which is stealing a tile to make a triplet. And that's obviously you have a pair. And you'll take from uh, third, uh, the third thing for make a triplet. That can be done uh, from any player. So if you have two, say, east winds, and the player to your right lays down an east wind, you can take that for the triplet, you can call pawn and take that. There is also the chi, which is stealing a tile to make a run. Chi's can only be taken from the player to your left. I think this was done uh, mainly to make sure that um, the, uh, flow of play of, uh, the flow of play didn't make too much of a mess because what that means is you're only taking it from the person who last laid a tile down to your left, the person who came before you. Essentially, it also uh, makes it a little more difficult to get a chi because only that person to your left after they set down a tile is uh, when you can take one. And then there's con. Uh, I mentioned quads earlier. So uh, con is the idea of having four 
of a single tile. And you can steal to make a con, and you can also make a con naturally by uh, just drawing the four tiles and having them in your list there. Um, what that will do is a couple of things, actually. Uh, what it will do is require you drawing an extra tile for your hand, because now you have a quad, and that means you're technically off in terms of the number of tiles in your hand. You can't really make a quad three more sets and a pair with only 13, well, 14 tiles from the one you draw, so you have to take an extra one. Basically, that's called a set, and it's set aside, and uh, you, know, you can make whatever you need from the rest of your hand. Um, also, uh, making a con also flips a Dora indicator on the dead wall. We'll get to Dora later. Dora is a different concept, which we will cover in a bit. Um, but as I mentioned, that can be declared even if you didn't uh, steal, and that keeps your hand what is called open. So the big thing to worry about with stealing is that it makes what's called an open hand. And an open hand means that uh, you have a lot fewer, you have far fewer options for making a winning hand. Um, because you are stealing a tile, because you're making it easier on yourself, you know, the rules of the game want to make it harder for you to actually win. So uh, we'll get to what that means in a moment. Actually, we'll get to that right now because the whole point of uh, making a winning mahjong hand is your hand has to have at least one what is called a yaku. So um, a yaku is essentially having a complete hand and having it satisfy at least one particular condition. Uh, it's basically what uh, it's basically a scoring element. You have one at least one yaku in your hands, and that means you could potentially score. So, and the more yaku you have in your in your hand, then the more uh, potential points you get when you win. And uh, each yaku represents uh, a certain number of what are called han. Uh, and there's no real direct translation for han. It's basically just a certain kind of point. And uh, what that means is that some some yaku will have uh, fewer han. Uh, sorry, some yaku will have more han. Some yaku will have fewer han. Uh, some yaku will have fewer han if you have an open hand, if you've stolen, and some yaku are invalid if your hand is open. So uh, there are a lot of yaku. If you ever looked at a list of valid hands in mahjong, you could probably probably eyes crossed. Probably you know you had a, a bit of a migraine there because there are you no. Know, dozens of valid hands, and looking at them in terms of tiles, it uh, kind of boggles the mind a bit. Uh, one of the nice things about Clubhouse, which I'm going to show you guys, is that you can even push a button and it will scroll up here. Here's some Yaku you probably want to go for, uh, based on what your hand is, which is really, really helpful. Oh yeah, I mentioned Han. There's also this little thing called Fu. Um, we're not going to go over Fu. Fu is complicated. Uh, it involves triplets and, or runs. Uh, it's just basically a secondary uh, element of scoring and it determines how many points you get and sometimes what kind of hand you can get, but we're not going to cover that here in this presentation. <laughs> One thing I want to point out too um, is that the Yakuza series in particular has uh, a couple of options before you set up a game, and one of the options is two Han minimum. Uh, it's usually on by default. Uh, I suggest everyone to turn that off because um, if it's two Han minimum, then you'd least need at least two Han to go out which can be very difficult if you're just learning the game. And honestly, it makes for slower games, too. And most people will turn it off because it means it's easier to make a winning hand. Game goes a little faster. Uh, Clubhouse has uh, one Han minimum on by default, so it's not even an option. So let's cover uh, just a few examples uh, of some easy Yaku to go for. Uh, Ricci, we will be discussing that on the next page because it's a little bit complicated, but that is worth one Yaku. Uh, if you can declare Ricci, uh, that'll be at least one Yaku for a win, no matter what your hand looks like. Uh, all Simples, also known as Tanyao, uh, basically what that means is that every tile in your hand is suited and contains uh, a consist of two to eight, so no ones, no nines, and no honor tiles, so no wins, no dragons, just uh, number of tiles from two to eight. Uh, if your game has an option called uh, Quitan and you turn that on, basically what that means is you can make an all simples hand on an open hand. So you can steal and have uh, a winning hand on all simples. Okay, uh, another common one to look out for, this is very easy ones to make, the dragon triplet. Uh, if you get two, del two of a dragon, steal the third one, then that makes for a nice, easy yaku. Uh, it's called yaku high, and uh, it can be used on an open hand, so it tends to be very nice and easy ones for people to get uh, when they're just learning and uh, learning the system of mahjong. Also, the wind triplets, which is sometimes called kazai high, but it's technically another type of yaku high. 
Uh, it's a triplet of wins, uh, not just any triplet of wins. It has to be the triplet of wins that is either the seat you're sitting in. So remember when I said at the beginning, everyone has a particular seat. Uh, and then either that's a wind or the prevailing wind for the match. So, uh, and when it starts, it's usually the east wind. So east tiles tend to be pretty handy to look for, uh, pretty helpful there. And it can also be done on an open hand too, so remember that. All right, uh, so uh, based, now we're gonna talk about preparing to go out, preparing to you know, uh, declare a winning hand. So there are a couple terms you wanna know before you do that. Uh, the first is called Tenpai. And Tenpai is just really a fancy name, which means that you are one away from a complete hand. I say complete hand in terms of uh, you know, four sets in a pair. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you actually have a winning hand. Uh, you still need a Yaka to be able to win, but in a state of Tenpai, you are technically only one away. Uh, and if the round ends in a draw, you'll get points if you're in Tenpai. So if you're getting near the end of the round, and uh, you know, you're not close to a winning hand, you can try to steal to try to get yourself in Tenpai, and then that's a better situation than going on draw without it. So uh, the other one is Richie, and uh, specific to Richie Mahjong, if you go play other types of Mahjong, she might not have this option, but basically it's an option to declare uh, that you are one away from a winning hand. This has to very specifically be a winning hand. Uh, it has to be closed, and it has to uh, be uh, in a state where you only need one more tile to win. So you uh, requires a wager of a thousand points, and uh, basically what it'll do is lock your hand for the rest of the hand uh, for the rest of the whole hand uh, until you uh, get that winning tile, whether uh, you get the winning tile or somebody else discards it. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that um, some mahjong games will say, "Hey, you can declare Richie. You might want to do that," and they'll give you the option right away. In the Yakuza series, it's actually different because they don't tell you. You have to push a button on the controller and that will bring up the option if it's available to you. And that's like the square button on a PlayStation controller or the X button on an Xbox controller. Once you do that, the little Richie window will pop up if it's valid and uh, then you can declare Richie if you want to. And really one of the things I tend to advise people if they're playing the Yakuza version is just keep tapping square every once in a while. You know, you'll, uh, you might get the Richie prompt and you didn't even know it. So uh, that's something to remember there. And uh, there's a lot of things I like to refer to too because one of the great things about the Yakuza series is that they do nothing by halves. And uh, even something as simple as declaring Richie is done with a lot of style and flash. All right, so uh, now, finally, the idea of winning a hand going out, uh, which is a couple of terms called ron and sumo. Ron is the idea of taking a tile that an opponent discards to win. So another opponent has set down the tile that you need, and you're like, ron, I'm gonna take that and declare that I've won the hand. And then there's sumo, which is the idea that you drew the tile as part of your turn. It was a normal tile you drew, and it is meant to complete your hand, and uh, that it's sumo, uh, that is, uh, one Yaku, if you have a completely closed hand, no steals, Atsumo is one Yaku. So anything you got in your hand, as long as it's closed, as long as you draw the winning tile, that's Sumo, that means you can win. And once that happens, once the winner wins the hand, then the points are awarded and play moves on to the next round. So, you know, it's always a very, that's not, it's, it's the best gift I could find. They actually don't have a Sumo gift, uh, GIF on Google. I couldn't find it, so best thing I had was this Pocket Circuit Racer one. <laughs> All right, so um, we're gonna talk a little, just a little bit about Dora, this is kind of near the end of the presentation here, but the Dora is literally bonus. If you ever see something that says Dora, it means it's bonus stuff. You cannot win uh, a hand on Dora alone, no matter how much you have. You have to have at least one Yaku still. So uh, what'll happen is that at the beginning of the match, uh, the Dora indicator on the dead wall uh, will be flipped, and that means that next uh, tile in the sequence is what is considered uh, Dora for the round. Uh, if the Dora indicator is a number, then uh, it's uh, the next number up in the sequence, unless it's nine, in which case it goes back down to one. If the indicator is a wind, then it's the next wind in uh, clockwise in the uh, wind compass sequence. So if it's north, it goes to east, east it goes to south, and so on around. Uh, if the indicator is a dragon, then it's the next dragon in this predetermined sequence, basically green, red, white. The way I like to remember it is it's alphabetical, so green, red, white, and the English alphabet uh, come in alphabetical order. That's a good way to remember that. So, uh, yes, and then if you have a winning hand and you have Dora tiles in your hand, then any 
of those tiles each count as one Han for the scoring thereafter. So uh, just referring back to our hand from the uh, earlier, you can see here uh, in the upper left is where the uh, dead wall is, and the dead wall has a t uh, tile flipped over. Can someone tell me in the crowd what is Dora based on the indicator seen here? Yeah, the two of coins. And another easy way to tell that, especially for Clubhouse, is they give you the uh, nice little gift of just shading the tiles yellow if they're Dora. Just very easy to tell by looking at them. And uh, there's a couple more notes about Dora too because there are more bonuses you can have. Um, there's what's called Uda Dora. Basically what that means, if uh, you declare Ricci and you win the hand, then not only the tile on the dead wall, but also there's another tile beneath it. That tile is also Dora. Uh, there's Khan Dora. So I mentioned when uh, you declare a Khan, when you declare a quad, uh, a set of four, then uh, you flip another Dora indicator on the dead wall. So that makes yet another Dora indicator. A uh, particular thing about that is that um, that means everyone has access to that door indicator now. <laughs> so uh, cons can be kind of risky, but uh, we'll see if we can get any in the game we're going to play. Uh, lastly is Red Dora. This one's pretty easy. Um, it's usually an option in most games, but if you turn Red Dora on, that means some of the five tiles will be red, and those will count as Dora as well. I have a question over there. This is true. Dora still only counts for a winning hand. Correct. Yep. The, you are, you know, taking the risk of uh, assuming you are going to win the hand. It's always a good attitude to have, a nice positive attitude going to these things, but yeah. So um, sometimes people get tripped up by certain hands. They're like, I'm looking at this hand, and it should be a winning hand, and it's not, and I don't know why, and I'm panicking, and I'm having a migraine, I'm having anxiety. And um, there are little extra rules kind of on the back end. Uh, the situation called Fruity 10 is basically the idea of having a hand. It's not common, um, but it does uh, come up every now and again. It's the idea of having a hand that can only be won uh, through a draw and declaring it sumo, uh, and it cannot be won on a uh, run stealing a tile from somebody else. The most common way to enter Fruity 10 is to um, have a tile in your discards that you need to win. It's just your own, not somebody else's. But uh, if, for example, you needed a nine of sticks to win, and somewhere near the beginning of the hand you discarded a nine, uh, that puts your hand in a state of 30 10 if that was the tile you needed to uh, win the hand. Uh, another common way, well, a less common way, but sometimes if you're me, uh, is to declare Ricci and uh, have an option for a Ron to come up and then say, no, I don't want that one. Uh, I did that. Uh, I made a Yakuza Mahjong video uh, a couple years back, did it during my match, didn't notice it, and then someone had to point out in the comments that I entered a state of Fury 10 and could not win the hand, at least on a run, because uh, I declined taking a run, so uh, mea culpa on that one. Uh, I'm thinking of making a new video, too, because there are some stuff I've learned in the last few years. But uh, uh, last bit here is uh, some special hands. These are the hands that are not necessarily requiring four sets in a pair. Uh, seven pairs is pretty simple. It's the idea of collecting two uh, of particular tiles seven times over the course of your hand. Uh, it's not super hard to get, but um, you can't steal for it because you're not making triplets or runs or anything, so you have to make sure that you are being dealt all these pairs. You can't steal, you can't steal on the last one, though, off of a run, but uh, you can't steal during the hand. And the other one, the legendary 13 orphans, uh, it's really hard to get. Um, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a very special hand, but the idea is it has one of every honor. So that's four wins, three dragons, and then it also has ones and nines of each of the suits as well. So um, it's, a, you know, it's a harder hand to make. I've never made one naturally in my life. I've gotten close, but never made one myself. So uh, just to wrap up essentially for the uh, idea of just the flow of play is once the hand's over, uh, the winds will rotate. Um, sometimes the winds don't rotate, and there are two ways for that to happen. One way is if the winner is east, there's also the dealer. That person will win 1.5 times their score for the hand, and they'll enter what's called a streak, essentially, and the winds will not rotate. They will remain east, so we'll have another hand, and it's an extra hand for the actual play of the game. Uh, the other one is if the hand ends in a draw and the dealer or the East player is not in Tenpai, sorry, if they are in Tenpai, 
then the hands then it doesn't rotate again. So if the dealer wins, or if there's a draw and the dealer's in tenpai, then the wins do not rotate. So essentially, once the wins have rotated four times, that's basically um, the end of the game if you're playing uh, a game where you're only on east. Uh, sometimes in Yakuza, they call it a quarter game or a half game. Uh, it's the lower of the two. And uh, if you go towards half or full or an east-south game, then that means you will move on to the next set of four where the cardinal win is now south. Now, that you know obviously implies the idea that there could be a west and a north. Uh, those make for really long games, so I think for a large, for most uh, casual play, most people don't play for that long anyway. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it. I think one of the last major tips I want to you know give people of or advice or wisdom. Um, sometimes you just lose. Sometimes you're like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna get a great hand. I just need a couple of tiles, and then someone just slides in with a massive hand and says no. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this manga. It's called, well, it, the English name is called The Legend of Koizumi. Uh, the uh, actual Japanese name is called Reform with No Wasted Draws. And it is a crazy manga where real life politicians make massive world decisions by playing hands of mahjong with each other. It is ridiculous. Uh, that is a former prime minister of Japan. Uh, there's also Pope Benedict in it, uh, George Bush Sr. and Jr., Putin, Vladimir Putin. It goes wild. Um, yeah, I, uh, Trump ends up getting in there too. He does, absolutely. Um, also, the major arc is, um, the, the major villain of the first really major arc of the manga is that uh, Hitler survived. And he's a Mahjong master too. And he can... He, and he has, can turn his hair blonde and go up to become super Aryan Hitler. It is a crazy manga. Uh, oh, uh, sorry. Uh, you can find it under Legend of Koizumi. You can also find it under Reform with No Wasted Draws. Legend of Koizumi is an easier way to find it, I find. All right. So uh, that's all set. And uh, ooh, wow. Took me longer than I thought, but we are going to get in demonstration. So uh, I think what we're going to do now is flip on over to uh, the other input. There we go. All right, so. On this side here. Easy for me to see. All right. Oh, not local play, not yet anyway. Single system, one player. So this is Clubhouse Games, 51 Worldwide Classics on the Switch. Um, honestly, if you were to pick this game up, you could probably pick up Reiji Mahjong pretty easily because this one does actually a pretty good job of teaching to you. We're not gonna bother with that skit though. Some of those skits are wild, but uh, we're just gonna go right to the game. So, you know, one of the things you can do is Red Door is an option here, CPU difficulty. Um, the classic style does not put letters and numbers on it. We're gonna do the one with numbers on it. And we're only gonna play an East only game. But let's see what we can manage here. All right, I'm third, which means I end up being what? West, yeah. So each player starts with 25,000 points, you can see. All right, um, wow, not a bad hand to start with. Um, is it, can anyone see what I have already? I got two green dragons. What else I got? I got four in characters. I have a, I got a one, two, three on the sticks. That's pretty good. It's not a bad start. Yep, pair of green dragons. Uh, door indicator says three of circles up there, so this uh, four is actually Dorda. Um, so I think I'm going to start by getting rid of that nine. All right, I got a seven. I don't like that. A lot of hands in Mahjong are just staring at a test. Oh, here we go. What do you think? I mean, I can get a Yaku off a green dragon without you know, having an open hand. Why don't I just take that for right now? Uh, I am going to get rid of now the white dragon, I think. I'm probably going to make mistakes because you know I'm trying to 
teach and keep this going too. But for now, let's just keep moving on, see if I get any interesting stuff that matches to what I currently have in my hands. Uh, I think I will keep that, and I'll get rid of the nine. Just because terminals are tough to make a good hand off of anyways. All right, it's not so bad. Um, I want to get rid of that seven of characters over there. So, yeah, basically every day. Hi, uh, question? Yes. So, correct. You don't show your entire hands, um, but it's just, that's the state of your hand, essentially. Now that you're starting to show part of your hand, your hand is now officially open. Because those three dragon tiles are in view. Anyone can see them right now. That's a good question. Actually, I didn't bring that up. Thank you. Another question? That's an excellent question. I think the answer is yes, but I've never come across it personally. All right, looks like that person went away. I know, don't worry too much about it. Sometimes you enter Ricci and you stay there for the entire rest of the hand. It's infuriating. I, you know what, I'm gonna get rid of this four. I like being Dora, but I have a five on one end, the eight on the other. If I kept the four and the six, then I'd have to go five. All right, uh, I'm not gonna do that. Okay, that's, uh, I wanna get rid of that three, just for kicks. So I'm now officially in Tenpai. You can see there in the lower right corner, that's another good thing about Clubhouse, it tracks how close you are to Tenpai, very nice. And you can see over here, there's a need. I need a five of dots or an eight of dots to win the hand. Let's see what happens. Actually, probably, I can't declare Ricci, remember, because uh, I called Pawn on the Dragon. Nope. I can't, I must be in for a 10. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, I needed a, because uh... I wasn't paying attention, that's why. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I wish. So we're just gonna let this hand die. <laughs> he mercifully ended that one. Yes, I should not have thrown out that four of characters. I'd missed, uh, that was a missed input. But uh, now we're gonna add up what this person has, and I'm gonna show you what he's got here. Uh, he's got a Ricci, which means he was, you know, one away from Tenpai and declared it. Uh, closed Sumo, that means he could declared Sumo and didn't have to throw anything out. That's another Han for him. Looks like he's got a pure straight there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of dots. That's really nice. Uh, that's two Han on a closed hand. Yep. And uh, he's got a couple door there with the four dots and the nine of dots. Um, one important thing about a pure straight, you can actually steal to have a pure straight as a Yaku. It's only one Han if you steal, but you have to make sure on a pure straight that you're stealing for the one, two, three, for the four, five, six, or for the seven, eight, nine. You cannot do two, three, four, and hope you can get a, pure, a full straight because the whole thing is, is meant to be three sets. Question in the back. Yes. Correct. I mean, one or the other, depending on the situation, but that wouldn't be good for them because they already have a seven, eight, nine. They probably would not want to, in general sense. It doesn't cancel anything necessarily unless they want to declare that as the pair in their winning hand. So they were under they were in a situation where they only needed a three or a five, and they wouldn't want to change that. So. Sure. What makes the four and the nine of dots So, oh, good one. Um, so remember the Dora indicator at the beginning of the match was a three of dots. You can see it over there on the right, in the mid-right of the screen. There's a three of dots there. That meant the four of dots was Dora. Because that person declared Ricci, they'd have access to Ura Dora. Remember I mentioned that? Ura Dora, when you win a hand on Ricci, is the tile beneath the Dora indicator tile. So that ended up being an eight of dots, which meant the nine of dots was also Dora. Now, no one's going to know that until the very end of the hand. So uh, it's a secret until someone wins. But it turns out that person got lucky and they have another character that was Dora. Question. Uh, yes, I have literally learned about that about two days ago, actually. <laughs> uh, it's not, doesn't come up often as I've found. Uh, it does, it can happen. 
Um, but you, you know, like I said, we're not. If we went over every single condition and rule for the entire game, we'd probably be here all day. <laughs> all right. Any more questions before we move on to the next hand? Go ahead. Yep. I have not. <laughs> I just know it exists. I've watched it play it on a video, and there's some, you know, prompts that get. Go ahead. What's your question, though? Yep. Oh, yes. I think I've seen that. The little uh, arrows that pop up when you're uh, picking for discard. Yeah. I was wondering if that's trustable. I have no idea. I, I'm getting some uh, throat cutting, so uh, I'm going to say it's probably not as trustable as you might think. Um, just, you know, try not to try to generate a general idea of what you should be looking for rather than trying to trust that particular thing. So they won points. Fair amount of points, too. And because it's sumo, they take points from all of us. If it's Ron, you only take points from the person you steal. Now, one thing I want to show, too, uh, if I hit the L button here, uh, current recommendations. So that's pretty nice. They just show you what some things you probably want to go for. Now, obviously, these ones are pretty easy. So, uh, you know, generally good ones. All right. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll keep that six. And this time, I hope to have no bad inputs. doing this one-handed <laughs> sure I don't want to play with bamboo sticks today and it turns out I think all my draws oh that's not so bad so we'll get rid of all our bamboo sticks uh, I think not okay east went away I think I'm gonna drop this east and also a dragon went away too, but I don't know. I kind of want to hang on to that for no particular reason. The white dragon has already been laid down. Just gonna, if you see like one in a set, just kind of keep that as a priority kind of thing for getting rid of. Now I'm gonna get rid of the green dragon because I got a lot of characters over there and I want to work with those. Okay, it's not so bad either. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of this one down here because it's kind of sitting lonely, not really doing anybody any favors. It's a terminal, yeah. Don't need that. Well, technically, I mean, my seat went to south, but at this point, uh, I see two already dropped, so what's the point of having that? Okay. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think I want to get. So you so do you remember Kazehai I mentioned as one of the easier Yakus? I could either get a triplet of Easts because we're in the East for prevailing wind, or a triplet of South because that's my current wind for where I'm sitting. And that would be a Yaku, not Dora, a Yaku, a winning element. <sighs> they keep giving me stuff I might like, but it's like you look at it and what am I supposed to do with this at the end of the day? I still need actual stuff to land here. Okay. Yes, I'm in Ricci, yeah, or I'm in Ten Pie. So now I can declare Ricci, and uh, let's see. I have, an, I have several options actually. So I can, if I were to stop this, if I were to discard the four, I would need a five or a three because I have a triplet of a six, pair of a five, triplet of a three, triplet of four, and a four, five, six on the far right. Now, if I got rid of the five, I would instead need a three, a six, or a three. That's not bad. Having more options for Ricci is always good. So if you see multiple Ricci and multiple things coming up under Ricci, it's probably handy, even if there's been some discards already. So you can see there's been a six discard on the right. Uh, I don't think any threes of dots have been, or threes of characters have been discarded. So I think I'm going to go for that. It'd be an easier win. So now I don't got to do anything else for this hand. It'll all go on its own. And there it is, right away. I'm so glad I was actually able to win a hand. Because I could have gone completely swinging for this entire game. All right, OK, so what did I get? I got a Ricci. I got a one shot. Uh, that's also known as Ipatsu. That is the idea that before a full circuit has gone around, after I declared Ricci, I was able to get it on someone else's next draw or my own. So on the next four draws, if after you declare Ricci, if you get the winning tile, that's Ipatsu, that's, that's another Han. Uh, I've also got all symbols. As you can see here, it's all well between two and eight, and that's all numbers. And the one Dora, uh, the three, the last one I drew, 
uh, was Dora for the, uh, the Dora indicator. There are two characters. All right. That doesn't put me in first yet, but... Okay. This hand's not great, but uh, let's see what we can do. I'm not north, so you can see my seat wind is east. Funny thing, if you have the seat wind and the prevailing wind, and you get like a full hand, uh, sorry, uh, a triplet, that counts for twice. So if I get a triplet of east, then that'll be worth two Han. Pretty nice. I think I'll get rid of this seven. Oh, one, two, three, not bad. I think I'll just get rid of this other seven here. Six. I think. No, I don't like this. No. Yeah, it's just one of those things where it's like, maybe I'll just get rid of the east because I don't really have any promising things coming from that direction right now. Yeah, I don't need that. Uh, no, thank you. Yeah, so this was, it's, it's prompting me to steal. If I didn't know, I might steal that, and then it's like, now I have an open hand, and then what do I do? I mean, technically, I'm not too far off from a hand of all simples, so I might be able to win, but I'm not going to worry about that for right now. No, thank you. Okay, that was a chi. I'm not going to bother taking that. Oh, there we go. I, my, my, gamble, my gamble paid off. And uh, let's see here. If I were to discard one of the twos, I would need a six of sticks. If I were to discard the seven, uh, two of sticks or four of dots for the triplet there. I think we're going to do that instead of getting the Dora. It'd be easier to actually get a winning hand. But for all I know, this entire hand could exhaust without me winning. That's happened to me plenty of times. Um, I never need a two of sticks or a four of dots. I will need your energy, folks. Ah, oh, there it is. Sometimes you just lose. <laughs> At least it wasn't my Ron. Sometimes, you know, if I'm still drawn and discarding, so if someone could get a Ron on that hand. <laughs> and that always sucks. So what do we got here? Twin runs. So you can see here they got two fours, two fives, two sixes. So if you have a matching run, you know, of exact tiles, then that's twin runs. It's another Han. Uh, they got three Dora, two from the seven of sticks there, from the six of sticks there on the dead wall, and the other one is the red five. So pretty good run, pretty good for them. Uh, yeah, these, there are some funny, clunky names for some of these scoring, like Mangan and Hanuman. Um, they're just basically higher scoring hands, just do well. Because some of the Yakuza games like ask you to get Mangan and Hanemon, and you're like, how do I do that? <laughs> it means get good, essentially. <laughs> so right from me. Okay, we're in the last one here. Well, we're in the fourth. Then it may not necessarily be the last one if the winds don't rotate. But uh, let's see. I got a one, two, three. That's pretty nice. Uh, I am north, so I'll keep that. I will get rid of the nine because the terminal. Okay, nothing good there. Uh, let's see. Let's get rid of that one. Ooh, not bad. I think I'll get rid of this other three. Ah, okay, now here's the problem though. I have a, I have a triplet, I have Sorry, I have a, a, a run over here. I have a triplet over here. I have a pair of norths. Those are fine. Um, there's a third north in discard. So I think maybe the north will just be my pair. But I also have a 3-4, a 5-6, a 4-5. I'm going to get rid of this 3-4 here because the other two have Dora tiles in them. Yep, yeah, no good. So I'm going to need a 4 of sticks, a 7 of sticks, a 3 of dots, a 6 of dots if I stick to what I'm doing here. Yep. Yep. 
Oh, what do I do with that? I don't know. I ah. Because at least with the North, now I can steal something if I really wanted to. I don't want to steal that, but I can steal something if I really wanted to. Okay. But the problem is now I need to make a pair. And sometimes making a pair can be really hard. Uh, like it's, it seems more difficult than making a run is making a pair. Okay. So we're going to take, we're going to declare Ricci. And our only option is the six because otherwise... We don't want to make a three of dots and a six of dots as our thing, so we're going to go for that. Yes. Let's do it. Last round. Here we go. Three or six. Oh, that's a seven. That's a different suit. <laughs> oh, wrong suit again. Come on. Sometimes the uh, games can also tell you how many non-discarded tiles there are of each particular tile. But nothing happened. So, so what happened here is we ended up, we exhausted all the tiles, we entered draw. Uh, I was in 10 pi, so uh, I'm going to get points. Uh, the player across from me is in 10 pi, they're also going to get points. Problem is, uh, the east guy, the dealer, is not in 10 pi, so that ends the game. Ta da! It's all right. So, yeah, that's part of it. Didn't, I didn't come in last. Thank you. Okay, right, question. I heard about Mahjong Soul and I was kind of considering getting into it, but uh, no, I have not started it yet. Sorry. I heard it's pretty good. Is it free to play or is it just a. Uh, it is free to play. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, there's another. There's, we have a uh, uh, Mahjong Soul uh, endorsement. So go for that. Let's see what we got for time here. Uh, we got about 13 minutes. Want to do another one? Oh, we have another question. Ah, yes. Correct. Yes, uh, that is the same kind of thing. Uh, it's basically just marking that tile so people know it was the one. Yep. Uh, anyone want to play a game with me? Oh, we got one. Once, uh, one wants to play, get your switch out. We might not be able to do it before time, but we can move outside. <laughs> You should be able to download the free demo and connect in via um, joining a game. Should be able to do it via local play to choose a lobby. All right. We're getting. All right. Anyone else coming in? Oh, yeah. If you need a moment, take a moment. It's going to be first come, first serve. I have no time. To, unfortunately, we have no time to. Uh, so, Lizzie, Spike, Tara, and Rob. So, I would ask you if you could not look at my hand. Uh, I can't stop you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I was considering like arranging chairs so you're all looking away from me, but it's, it's, what's the point? But, yeah. All right, all right. This one is going to take a little bit longer. That's why we probably will run out of time before we end of it, because everyone has to take a turn as they go. All right. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think there might be time limits here. I Honestly, this is the very first local Mahjong game I've ever played. So thank you, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, if you guys don't uh, want to leave right away, I have some small gifts for you, actually, for coming up to my panel. I don't have one enough for everybody, but uh, I did get some, bring some Mahjong tile magnets. So once we uh, wrap, if you want to hang around, uh, we will, oops, don't kick me out. Oh, of course. My pleasure. Yeah. Well. Oh. Wow, we have a, so that was a stolen con, right? Yeah, okay. So that flipped another door indicator up there. So now there's two. That's something we didn't really, we didn't really do con in the uh, game. All right. 
let's start getting rid of some of these. So I won't necessarily tell you exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. I mean, clearly we know what you're doing. Well, see, that's the thing. Uh, if you've got a valid hand with a Yaku, you can pawn and chi all you want. You can like dwindle your hand down to nothing, nearly. Not uh, for all triplets, yes, but you at least some of them have to be concealed. Yeah, actually, no. You might not have to necessarily all be concealed, but you know, you don't have to declare them all. You can have uh, uh, all triplet hand closed, open, whatever, because it's two Han if it's closed, one Han if it's open. And by the way, that's triplets or quads. So technically, uh, Spike could be going towards an all triplet hand. Okay, why? Look at that. Look at that. This is garbage. Three eighths of sticks in a row, the whole triplet. And I got rid of all of it. There are also some circumstances where a pawn can be turned into a con. Um, I forget those off the top of my head, and we're not going to go over that here. <laughs> I'm not sure, <laughs> actually. I, I, this is not a question I can answer, unfortunately. Well, I have four pairs. That's a start. I could go for seven pairs, in theory. Okay, not bad, not bad. Let's get rid of that. Three. Three. Oh, look, this is the last green dragon. Just, just when nobody needs it. Oh, good, another four. You can see some a lot of repeating patterns in my discards. and It's making me regret the whole thing. Better not. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, well done, well done. Excellent, very good. Very good, round of applause for that one. All right, let me check the time here. Okay, we got a couple. All right, we'll do one more round, we'll do one more round. Auspicious wins, dragon tiles, all, tri all triplets. There's your all triplets for two Han. So I, I guess they call it two Han even though you stole for it. So as you understand, I'm not completely a master of this myself. I'm still learning. So uh, rattling off the actual, it's nice that the game calculates for me is what I'm saying. Yeah, Toy Toy. That's the uh, Japanese slash Chinese name. Because the thing to remember is when you're talking about hand names, um, they are coming through many translations. And uh, you know, when you call them official, it's like not even not official. <laughs> Then I'll take. Get rid of that seven. All right. 
sorry. I just want to see if I can turn on the music because, you know, this game's great, but the music's kind of crap. It's just bonk, bonk. Bonk, bonk. The Yakuza series with the, uh, um, has funny with the music because it's like it feels like it's piped in from like speakers in the actual club that you're in. I mean, it's all music from other parts of the series too. It, oh, it's not even Shuffle or Boogie either. If it was the Triple Triad song, then that would be awesome. But that's for Triple Triad and only Triple Triad because it's law. Yes, it's the Golden Saucer song. <laughs> Thank you, yes, I'm I was trying to remember it. So we are gonna call it after this last hand, uh, and whoever's in first will have a prize for them. Yes, very good, very good. That's an early reach you too. Because that was the one uh, he declared Ricci on. So we know which tile he declared Ricci off of. Red Dragon, bye. Yes, if you can get Ricci on your very first draw, it's double Ricci, and that's two Han. There's a lot of cool stuff. There's, I mean, once you go into the actual, whew, okay. So once you go to the actual top tiles, that are um, what they're called limit hands or Yakuman. And basically the idea is that they essentially almost win the game for you because they're worth so many points. There are ones for 13 orphans is a Yakuman, for example. And uh, there's one for getting all green tiles. There's one called nine gates, which is uh, three of ones, three of nines, one each of two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the same suit. And then there's another one of uh, that suit as well and like they're very high and difficult hands so what do we got here we got the richie a closed sumo because he called sumo uh the whole thing is all run so that's another han all symbols as well and the one door from the four of dots so very nice all right looks like spike terror is walking away with the prize today very nice we're gonna call it here but uh so stick around i got some other presents for you guys too and uh guys thank you so much uh any last minute questions you got any more questions, but uh, I hope you all are going to be feeling better with yourselves with playing Mahjong. And, uh, you know, you guys can always reach me on the internet, too. <laughs> so if you can also look up my guides, you can connect with me if you got any other issues. But uh, thank you guys so much. And hope you guys have a great panel, a uh, great MAGFest. You know, I had a great panel. I hope it was a great panel. <laughs>